Sema hii ni mandeti ya nani, hii ni mandeti ya nani. NTSA, polisi, wote wanajukumu la kulinda wananchi wa Kenya katika mabarabara yetu. Mwishma speaker, unaona mtu ametoka na familia yake. Kwa sababu ya uzembe tu wa dereva, anakuenda, anafanya ajali, familia nzima inapotea katika hali ambao siyo. Lakini nikiwa mwanakamati wa uchukuzi, nataka kusema ile uzinduzi ambao tumefanya leo na mwishmiwa rais, itaweza kuonesha ya kwa kuwa ikiwa ni safety belt watakana kufunga, kutaikuwa system ambayo itakuwa ikiwa kufunga inaonekana mpaka kwenye head office ya NTC. Ikiwa ni speed governor inaonekana. Kutaekwa cameras ambao leo wameweza kudemonstrate kuonesha kuwa ikiwa ni uzembe wa yule e, dereva itaweza kuonekana pale hivi ili iweze kujulikana uzembe ulikuwa wake ama ilikuwa namna gani. Leo mheshimiwa speaker tuwashukuru kama kamati tukiangalia kule kwetu Mombasa hasa katika sehemu yangu ya Jomvu. Zamani ajali ilikuwa ni nyingi sana kwa sababu ya barabara mbovu lakini leo mimi nashukuru tuna barabara ambazo zimetengenezwa katika barabara ya highway kuna barabara ya madafuni kutokea katika sehemu ya Rabai kule ijapokuwa baada ya wiki mbili kutoka leo petition committee ambao mimi nili petition kwa nini haijamaliza barabara ile kwa hivyo tutakuwa na committee hiyo kuona kuwa tunafanya bidii barabara ya jitoni imalizike na leo ninamwambia mheshimiwa rais kwa barabara hiyo alianzisha lakini mpaka saa hizi kuna uzembe ya kuonesha kwa nini Asante Asante mheshimiwa the honorable Caroline Ngeleche member for Elgeo Marakwet Thank you Madam Speaker for giving chance to the people of Elgeo Marakwet County Madam Speaker um, I want to support the adjournment motion by the honorable member the uh, rate at which we are losing our people in this country nowadays on road carnage and road accidents is very extremely very high and I want to agree with one member who said it is almost equivalent to all the causes of death combined uh, lately Madam Speaker but also even as I contribute and as I support I also want to disagree with some members of parliament that want to put it on the shoulder of one individual. Well, it is not about the ministry, it is not about the CS, it is not about an individual. It is about the road users. Um, the government is not in every uh, matatu, is not in every school bus, is not in every motorcycle, or is not a pedestrian who is walking along the road. Madam Speaker, I think the blame should go to everyone including the drivers, including even the passengers and uh, the traffic officers, each and every person, because it is an industry that accommodates many stakeholders and many players, Madam Speaker. Like, uh, for instance, when you look uh, at most of them, it is human error. It is the carelessness. You find people overtaking anyhow in uh, places that are not uh, approved for overtaking. You find even some other passenger passenger vehicles are overloaded and many a times madam speaker there are some departments that have slept on the job like we can speak it openly that there are all there is almost no inspection that is done many of the vehicles just have the documentation for inspection there is nothing they were uh, the speed governors that were long installed on the PSVs like the matatus the buses they are just there, but they are not working. You find a matatu or a bus at a speed of over 150 kilometers per hour, and you wonder if something happens and needs to uh, to break, to 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 maybe to break uh, at an emergency rate. What is going to happen, Madam Speaker? What I want to speak about candidly, one of them is the law enforcers who are in our roads. Kenyans and many Kenyans are used to. Uh, being being uh, micromanaged to uh, abide abide by the law. So the the traffic police officers or the IG who is supposed to be in charge of the enforcement 
you find that many police officers are made roads to be uh, the toll stations. They are just there, they go to the roads just to collect 50 shillings or 100 shillings, even if the uh, motor vehicle is over speeding, they are not taken to any court of law, they are not charged, you just pay the fee there. People bribe to get their way out. And at times why Kenyans prefer to do a bribe is how they are taken in circles. I wish there was a way that when you are uh, found over speeding, you are given what you are supposed to pay, you pay there and then, and then you proceed, it could have been better. So there are so many players that must be put in place. Number two is, at times, Madam Speaker, especially of late, there was a, a, um, a video circulating like a month ago or two months ago, whereby there are unscrupulous traders manufacturing lubricants, uh, oils, grease, and other products that are uh, to be used by our motor vehicles in River Road or uh, whatever the industry that they manufacture fake and uh, counterfeit products. I think that an investigation, a thorough investigation must be done. We might be blaming at times on the drivers because if, no, if, if the, wrong, uh, the wrong products are used on our motor vehicles, you find that the driver uh, is blamed for, for losing control or for not, um, for failed brakes. But you might find that it may be, it is the lubricant that was used that is actually not the proper and the ideal one. So I think somebody should just think beyond just what we see in the naked eye and investigate and, and uh, the motor vehicles involved in those road accidents. If I told the products that were in those uh, motor vehicles, the mechanical part of it was correct or not, we might find that we are importing uh, spare parts that are, are not to, to the standard. Maybe you find that most of those motor vehicles, most of them, of course, are Toyota. You find that there are local manufacturers or there are perfect importers of Toyota parts that maybe when they installed on our motor vehicles. Thank you, Caroline. The honorable members, I noticed that uh, you, are not, uh, you are not able to identify the mover. So this uh, motion of adjournment was moved by the Honorable Oscar Nabulindo. So most of you have just been saying by the Honorable Member, I realize that uh, it's very difficult to pronounce his name, but it's Honorable Oscar Namulindo. So the next one is the Honorable Kiarie. The Honorable John Waweru, Member for Dagoretti South. Madam Speaker, I thank you. And I also thank you, the Honorable, I also want to thank the Honorable Oscar Nabulindo for stopping the business of this house so that we can discuss a matter of great national interest. Madam Speaker, where we ought to start is by realizing the responsibilities that each person and each entity holds. This house in itself has a responsibility, and the responsibility goes beyond becoming a lamenting house. We cannot stand here on such an important motion to just talk the usual uh, things that we have heard out there. In fact, we should be part of offering the solution. Madam Speaker, in assigning responsibility, there is no way a government will run away from the responsibility of securing the lives of its people anywhere, up to and including the roads. This is because the Constitution does give provisions for government to protect life and property of its citizens. Madam Speaker, it is the government that develops policy. It is the government that is involved in driver training. It is the government that does the safety checks on drivers, on roads, and on equipment and, tra and, 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 and transport vehicles. It is government that is policing these roads through the Ministry of Interior. It is government that is developing the infrastructure that is failing at very critical times. So, Madam Speaker, responsibilities ought to be assigned so that each and every person takes their rightful role in correcting the menace that we are observing on our roads. Madam Speaker, some problems are historical. Some of them have been because of the lethargy of people in positions of decision making, fearing that if the problem is too big and they are not able to surmount it. But the Madam Speaker, in a very recent history, we have seen a minister who stood up 
against all odds and was able to correct the, man the menace on our roads, albeit for a very short period. And Madam Speaker, this should work as the gold standard on what the government ought to do at a time such as this. Madam Speaker, if government is not going to step up to, its, uh, to the plate, uh, to its responsibility, then whatever it is that we do with this zero hour, with this adjournment motion, amounts to nothing, Madam Speaker. Because when you look at the problems that we are working with, they will require for government to start giving solutions on so many levels. An example can be given, Madam Speaker, on infrastructural development. The Honorable uh, President Emeritus, Moi Kibaki, is credited for building an amazing piece of infrastructure in the name of Thika Road, Madam Speaker. That infrastructure, when it was provided, was sufficient for that time. But if you go to Thika Road today, you shall find traffic untold. But even more tragically, Madam Speaker, on the same road that is a super highway, you shall find all manner of traffic, motorized traffic, uh, uh, ten wheelers, matatus, uh, border borders, and anything that you can imagine, all fighting for the same lane. But Madam Speaker, when you're on the same infrastructural installation that is called Thika Road, you shall see beautiful road signs that assign lanes to different parts, uh, to different, uh, parts of traffic. On your extreme right, Madam Speaker, there is very clear signage that says that trucks and lorries cannot be on the first lane. But Madam Speaker, you shall see us as Kenyans blindly speeding a 10-wheeler truck on this fast lane, which is reserved for overtaking and, and, and fast traffic. But Madam Speaker, the responsibility then falls on government to check on how we are policing our roads, how we are developing this infrastructure, how we are doing the safety checks, how is that driver being trained. And Madam Speaker, this house also has some responsibility to play. We might need to review some laws so that we allow for quite a number of things, which will include even behavior change campaigns to change the national psyche of our people, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, because of time, I need to add that our laws will also need to onboard technology so that technology can assist where we have failed to be able to police and bring safety to our roads. Madam Speaker, I wish we would have this adjournment motion come to us as a substantive amendment. Thank you, KJ. The Honorable Mili Odiambo, member for Suba North. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I want to thank the Honorable Member for uh, bringing this adjournment uh, motion. Madam Speaker, I'll be very brief on this issue. And I just want to say that uh, if you listen to all that the members are saying, as a House, we have actually brought laws. We have passed laws. And the issue that is bedeviling this country is corruption. The reason that we have and roadworthy vehicles is because of corruption. The reason we have over speeding is because of corruption. Madam Speaker, the reason we don't have people jailed who have actually caused those accidents is because of corruption. And um, Madam Speaker, we can talk about this issue until God knows when. But what we need to do as a country is to deal with corruption. And the only way to deal with corruption is to have political goodwill at the top. And we hope the uh, president will wake up and notice that Kenyans are dying and deal with corruption decisively. Because if you look at countries where they've actually moved ahead, they have dealt with corruption. I thank the member. Thank you, Honorable Mili. The Honorable Naisula Lesuda, member for Samburu West. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity so that I can contribute to this very important um, uh, adjournment motion on the increased numbers of accidents that we have seen on our roads. And I want to thank Honorable Oscar for bringing this adjournment motion. Madam Speaker, just to add to what my colleagues have said, it is very devastating, it is very painful to see every single day we are losing so many people on our roads, and even one life is, is, a, is 
a lot to lose on our roads, Madam Speaker. Yesterday we saw in Makueni we, we buried seven people at one go. I can imagine the pain that that family is undergoing and the pain that that family is going through as they bury seven family members at, in, in one day, Madam Speaker. One, as Honorable KJ has said, we have to look at ourselves as Kenyans, Madam Speaker. And I must say that we have very bad manners. Our, just as individuals, as people, in the manner that we drive, in the manner that we cross our roads, in the manner that if there's no police officer, we will not be able to follow the law, Madam Speaker. So it is a matter of our training and changing our mindsets as Kenyans on how we value our lives and even the, value, the lives of others, Madam Speaker. Having said that, as it has been said, enforcement and the role of government is very, very important in, in ensuring that we reduce our accidents. If you go to the developed world, it is not so much also even just about what people would like to do. It is about enforcement. You know that if you do a mistake a number of times, you lose your license for a year or two years. You know that you will get, uh, because of the cameras as well, you will get your fine at your doorsteps. And so people then will tend to follow the laws of a country, Madam Speaker. And so we cannot run away from enforcing. We are not short of our laws and policies. They are there. And we cannot run away from the fact that the enforcement has to be done so that people can actually correct their bad manners to ensure that we follow the law. If you just go to a country like Rwanda, our neighbors here, and we have said that so many times, and we shouldn't be comparing ourselves to others. Others should be learning from us, Madam Speaker. When you go there, there is discipline. From our border, from border borders there, on how they enforce, they ensure that they wear helmets, even there is a helmet for the person that they are carrying. They follow their lane, Madam Speaker. And so it is important that we ensure that enforcement and we eradicate the, the issue of corruption. Because also once corruption uh, is, is, is um, entangled with the issue of enforcement, then it is impossible for proper enforcement to be done, Madam Speaker. And so I do not want to belabor. I just want to say that it is also unfortunate that we only talk about these issues when so many accidents have happened. That is when we see, um, you know, all uh, the people from the ministry talking, ourselves in Bunge. This should be something that should be done every other day, even when we do not have uh, accidents, Madam Speaker, so that it becomes uh, following the law so that it becomes issues of enforcement are done every single day and not just to wait until we have so many accidents across the country that we are all talking and we are all trying to, to, put, to put a bandage on top of our wound, Madam Speaker. So thank you for this opportunity and I do hope that uh, we will make this our day-to-day -day, um, you know, life in ensuring that we change our mannerisms and ensure that enforcement is also done. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Uh, the Honorable Moses Ijendi, member for Malava. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I also arise to appreciate uh, Honorable Oscar Nabolindo, MP for Matungu, for this uh, motion of adjournment. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, for those of us who have traveled to foreign countries, particularly Europe and America, and even here, uh, Rwanda, you see, we don't see police officers on, our, on the roads in those particular countries. Uh, accidents are to the minimal. Madam Speaker, I'm just wondering why the Minister for Roads has actually decided to recall NTSA. And we recall at the time uh, NTSA was being removed from the roads. It was because of what, how it was acting, causing so many accidents in the country. Madam Speaker, if the recalling of NTSA back to the roads is the issue of corruption because of the police officers, it, it would be very obvious that now corruption will be on the increase, on the highest, because both of them are civil servants. Both of them are employees of the government. So if police officers are taking corruption, then NTSA persons will continue also taking this corruption. In any case, even previously, NTSA persons were really the most corrupt, uh, partic uh, corrupt person in the country. So, Madam Speaker, the issue is not increasing inspectorate on the roads. 
the issue is improving on the police oversight role uh, in the roads. Ma Madam Speaker, the other issue that I feel causes most accidents on our roads are the road designs. Madam Speaker, I want to take the case of a road from uh, Kakamega to Kabrengu in, in Kakamega County and the junction at Kabrengu. Uh, the, the design is so poor that these roads, we always have accidents, particularly Kabrengu. So maybe when it comes to road designs, I don't know why this happens, because we believe we have engineers who can actually draw this particular road and do what's required. And even some of the roads after designing, they have no signposts. So you find that a place that looks like uh, we have a depression, there's no proper indication for the driver who is speeding at 90 to know that at this particular point, we have to reduce the speed so as to be at 60 or 40. So, Madam Speaker, it really is an issue for us to look at uh, that can actually improve or reduce the uh, number of accidents on our roads. Madam Speaker, previously, during Moy's time, he had banned the, uh, the, the driving of lorries, uh, trucks, at night. I don't know what happened with this, Madam Speaker. I would imagine, as the previous speaker has just put, we have the rules, we have the laws. If uh, the current uh, minister, CS, can actually effect these rules, Mishuki rules, the issue of these uh, tracks, this law is not moving at night, uh, Madam Speaker would really uh, check on this. Madam Speaker, also, when you look at the school buses carefully, the design of school buses is not adequate. Uh, uh, they are structured such that they are weak in themselves. When they are at a speed of, let's say, 90 or 100, you see they are prone to actually uh, rolling on the roads, which requires uh, the designers for the road construction or uh, road, uh, I mean, for the bus designs to recheck, to reconsider the school buses and even the buses on the roads. Uh, Madam Speaker, the other victim to road accident, accidents are motorbikes. Madam Speaker, when you just walk over across to Uganda here, uh, motorbikes also respect uh, traffic rules. But in Kenya, it's very interesting. Motorbikes are no respecter of any rules or uh, traffic rules. They, uh, they, 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 they move about, even on, high, on, even on highway, the way they so wish, causing a lot of uh, confusion in the roads. Madam Speaker, sometimes even uh, when the lights are off, when the lights are on, for pedestrians to move, you find that motorbikes are moving and causing a lot of uh, accident in the country. Uh, Madam Speaker, I also know of, uh, uh, I don't know if we can talk of maybe salaries. Madam Speaker, I know of some drivers from western part of Kenya. Driving from western Kenya to Nairobi, it takes about eight hours, nine hours. A bus driver drives from western from seven o'clock, arrives here around uh, five o'clock in the evening, Madam Speaker, the same driver is to drive the bus back to Western. Maybe we have to look at also, uh, also this because of the issue of maybe payment. The employers of these particular drivers want to have only one driver for purposes of managing their wage bills. Otherwise, if this is taken care of, Madam Speaker, maybe you can control uh, the number of accidents in the country. Otherwise, I thank uh, Mr. Nabulindo for this motion. Thank you. Cynthia Muge. Member for Nandi. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. I want to appreciate Honorable Nabulindo, MP Matungu, for uh, bringing this adjournment motion. Honorable Speaker, it is indeed important that we have a discussion as a house of representatives of the people of Kenya. Honorable Speaker, I want to say that um, there's no one thing that will make traffic uh, fatalities go away. That said, Honorable Speaker, I would want to say that we must work together. Together, Honorable Speaker, that entails the drivers who are road, and the road users and every other stakeholder, Honorable Speaker, who has a responsibility uh, in this sector, uh, the, road, uh, the, ro the road sector, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, just like Honorable Members have said, we do not have a, a deficit of laws and policies in this House and in this country. We have so many of them, Honorable Speaker. The only problem that, um, is that uh, the policies and the laws that have been drafted and passed, Honorable Speaker, unfortunately, they have been used as cash cows. Honorable Speaker, you go to the roads and you find a very sad situation where the traffic police knows that there is a problem with this driver and this vehicle. 
and the driver and the owner of the vehicle also know that there's a problem with the vehicle they're driving and them as the drivers, honorable speaker. But the two parties, honorable speaker, the traffic officer and the driver and the owner of this vehicle decide to pacify the situation by exchanging some petty notes, 50 shillings or 100 shillings, so that they can be left to go about their business, honorable speaker. Honorable speaker, this is a problem and this is the situation that we must speak to and we must be able to sort it out. Honorable speaker, I remember when I was a, I was a, I was a, I was a small, I was a small girl. And there was a time that the Michuki rules were in force, Honorable Speaker. And if you look at the report that came out, Honorable Speaker, after three months, the road accidents, Honorable Speaker, they had come down by a whole 74 percent, Honorable Speaker. And there is no magic that Michuki, as a Minister of Transport, uh, uh, employed in that particular situation. He actually ensured that there was implementation of the policies and the laws that have been passed by parliaments and that have been put together by experts, Honorable Speaker. That is the only thing that he did. Honorable Speaker, many people thought that the enforcement of those policies and laws were brutal. But Honorable Speaker, it does not matter how bad or how good the enforcement is. What matters, Honorable Speaker, is actually order that is brought to our roads and to our sectors, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, this is a hard decision and someone must take responsibility. Like Honorable KJ has said, Honorable Speaker, it is the responsibility of a government, a responsibility that has been put down in the Constitution to protect its people uh, from all the negative things that they might be faced with, Honorable Speaker. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, it is the responsibility of this government, our government, Honorable Speaker, to ensure that these laws and policies are enforced, Honorable Speaker, to the last bit, so that we can be able to sort out this mess and so that we can be able to have order in our roads and reduce, Honorable Speaker, the deaths. Honorable Speaker, you should see how painful it is to put four people in a coffin in a same, in, uh, coming from the same family for a funeral, Honorable Speaker. I don't think there is anything as hurtful, as painful as that, Honorable Speaker. And this is something that can be uh, sorted out, Honorable Speaker, by all of us playing our role. As a driver, you do your part, and as, a, a, as an enforcement officer or entity,
does vandalize this road signage and take it for their own use. Madam Speaker, this behavior of our Kenyans must stop. Madam Speaker, I am the MP Sotik, and there's a road which the, the section between Chebole and Soime is a black spot. People have died there. We have had several terrible accidents. Some are fatal. Some have maimed lives of our people. And we have asked the Ministry of Trans Infrastructure to put measures to stop the, 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 the killing of people in, this, in these areas. Madam Speaker, we have defective vehicles. And the, the police are there. They cannot stop this thing. People are, are on the road, and they are driving defective vehicles, and none of them has been arrested and taken to court. We have careless drivers. Madam Speaker, we have seen several of these people who are driving vehicles carelessly. And Madam Speaker, speeding is an issue. I watched Honorable Murkomen yesterday, Madam Speaker, and he spoke very well. But I think it's high time, Madam Speaker, we put whatever we are saying in practice. He has very good plans. We are going to see Moshimuya Murkomen implement the particular plans he has. So, Madam Speaker, I want to support this uh, adjournment motion and ask the mover to move now and look at the laws, whether we can be able to change, review, and even, even uh, bring up uh, new bills to start changing our laws in this country. Otherwise, Madam Speaker, I want to thank the, the mover and ask this house that they have got the responsibility to make our roads. Thank you, the Honorable Dr. Gideon Ochanda, member for Bondo. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, when we look at uh, what's in front of us deeply, there's a general problem, and there's a big one, in terms of where did the rain start beating us? I think this is the first question that we need to raise as a country. Either it is in terms of our blood, whether it is in terms of cultures. The way we've just brought ourselves up, there is a problem. And this problem is where we don't value life. What, what's happening in this country, in the name of road accidents, will be a crisis in many countries. And we look at it as the order of the day, it happens. And, and it's too much. We are losing a lot. But the problem is when we don't value lives. We don't value lives in terms of the human, uh, uh, whether they are uh, engineers, whether they are drivers, whoever is a road user in any sense, or people who do in, uh, infrastructure uh, development. There is a general problem in terms of how we do things. We do things in a manner that by the end of the day we don't care whether it's going to, uh, it's something that will make us lose lives or not. And I think that's what we need to get, revisit as a country. Where is it? What is it that we need to do so that we get back to a situation, we get back to understanding that there's a culture that can help us value human life? Immediately we don't value that, we are not going anywhere. If you're on the road at any time and you see the way a matatu pass, the next question is, does this person really value life? And we ask that question through and through any time you're on the road. Because these guys who are driving the matatus, their behavior is the same. They behave the same, the police behave the same, whether you are in Kibwezi or you are in Busia, police behave the same, matatu drivers behave the same, these uh, 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 picky picky guys behave the same. It is, it is just a bad behavior. A bad behavior that you are seeing and is common. So what is it that we need to do? So as a country, we need to look back and see exactly how do we start some exercise of where we can value life. If we don't value life, I don't think there's anything that we are going to be doing. If you value life as a person and you are a driver, definitely you will be observant on road signs. You'll be very careful in terms of what you do. You'll not be looking out for the police to tell you that you're over speeding. When you're over speeding, you're doing 160. And, and then you're saying that you're doing it, uh, so that even if the police doesn't see you or whatever. Whom are you doing it for? Whom are we driving for? I think these questions we must ask ourselves. Whom are we We must get to know that when you're on the wheels of a car, you are driving, you are first driving for yourself. And if you don't value your life, definitely you do not value life of any other person. 
do not value life of the third person. And this is exactly what we are, we, are, we are seeing. We are witnessing this thing day in, day out. Accidents, you can chronologize them. That a week or days doesn't pass when we have accidents involving trucks. Huge trucks parked along the roadside. A week or hours doesn't pass when we don't have a matatu hitting or a matatu killing people. Days don't pass when you get uh, this, this, this accident, the, 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 way, the way they happen, one can track them. One will get to know, like what was happening the other one or so weeks, what's happening that school institutions and school buses are the ones that were now getting involved in accidents in one week. Their frequency was just too much. What was happening? Is it something that you want to ask the schools? Is it something that you, I'm not too sure whom exactly you want to ask. Why that week that all of a sudden it is institutions and school buses and college buses are the ones that are getting accidents? What is happening at the weeks that they are not getting into accidents? What is happening that is the tracks that constantly we have? So these are things that are identifiable. We can isolate them and they can be worked on including the issues of those who are developing the roads, uh, Madam Speaker. So in my view, Madam Speaker, if you don't get to a situation where we value life, we get into systems where people, everybody else start valuing life, including their own lives. And if they don't start with valuing their own lives, I don't think we are going to be safe, whether we are on the roads or anywhere else, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. To the Honorable Yegon, member for Bomet East. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity also to contribute in this very important um, uh, adjournment motion. This motion is of national importance, Madam Speaker, because as we are debating this motion, the President was unveiling the National Road Safety Action Plan 2024-2028 this morning in KICC, Madam Speaker. This was talking about the same issues of uh, mitigating the road carnage in this country. And uh, Madam Speaker, the issues going around these problems of uh, road accidents in this country is because there are so many challenges we face or we see along the way when we are driving on the roads in our roads. First of all, the police needs to up their game because they don't check all these vehicles, including the border border, uh, ride, um, the border borders or the motorcycles. Because you find most of the vehicles being driven on our roads, Madam Speaker. The reflective, the reflect, uh, the, uh, what do you call the parking light, the brake lights, and even the hazards are not working. And you find, I don't know what the police officers are checking on the road because they should be making impromptu checks to make sure that all those, the brake lights, the traffic, what you call uh, the parking lights and the wipers even the, and the headlights are working in all the vehicles moving around in our roads. Madam Speaker, you also find the motorcycles. <clears throat> there is a requirement for the motorcycles to, be, to put the headlights on either during the day or during the night, all these uh, the motor, uh, motorcycles need to have their headlights on. But in Kenya here, we don't have any motorcycle putting the headlights during the day. And this uh, make, contribute to making accidents in our roads because you see motorcycles is being driven by one person or one, something like that is very... Um, <clears throat> It is hard to identify that this is a motorcycle. It's like a person moving on the road, and this must be made mandatory. Issues of helmets in the motorcycles also. There is, at the moment, it is very hard to find a motorcycle or a, a motorcycle rider putting on a helmet, leave alone the passenger also, who are not given the, the helmets to ride. And they carry excess, up to four passengers, including the rider himself, they come to a total of five in one motorcycle, which is, <clears throat> which I can say, Madam Speaker, it is uh, against the law, which one person has to be given um, 
um, has to be carried in a motorcycle. Um, you find also most of the vehicles which are stalling on the roads, they don't have reflective triangles. This is something which needs to be checked and make NTSA and Kenya police to make sure that all these are checked. Drunk driving in Kenya also has become so rampant. We need also to put laws which are very strict to make sure that at least people are put behind bars when they are found when they are drunk driving. The Michuki rules, the famous Michuki rules need to be brought back, uh, Madam Speaker. During the Michuki time, we used to find people very disciplined they were putting on safety belts in their vehicles uh, and all the rules which was uh, put in place. <clears throat> and again, on the roads, um, when we are driving on the highways or even the expressways, these uh, dual carriageways, we normally find vehicles which are heavy vehicles keeping right instead of keeping left when they are not overtaking. to get accident or to do make accidents. I want to submit this and I want to congratulate the mover, Honorable Oscar uh, Namu, Namulindo, uh, for bringing this very important motion. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. The Honorable John Waluke, member for Syria. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker for giving me also a chance to contribute on this very important uh, uh, motion. Uh, Madam Speaker, I want to thank the Honorable uh, Oscar Navalindo for bringing up this because Madam Speaker, as a country, yeah. Uh, Madam Speaker, we've lost uh, 1,300 people within a span of about uh, uh, three months, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I suggest myself that uh, the Minister for uh, Transport, Roads and Transport, Madam Speaker, the Honorable Murkomen, uh, should adopt the Michuki rules and also Michuki orders. Kenyans, uh, Madam Speaker, are always very notorious and they always test the system. So the minister should be firm with the rules, uh, Madam Speaker, about Madam Speaker, during Michuki's time, Madam Speaker, the trucks could not move uh, in the night. The truck should stop uh, moving from 6 p.m. and also the school passes, uh, Madam Speaker. The school passes, Madam Speaker, has killed very many students. Our children have died on roads because of careless driving. Sometimes, uh, Madam Speaker, the visibility in the night is not good, and it is, the vehicles are allow, allowed to, uh, to run uh, uh, during uh, night time, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, if these rules cannot be adopted, Madam Speaker, we are going to lose very many people uh, as a country, Madam Speaker. I want to thank the President for commissioning it uh, today, Madam Speaker. And I hope the police and NTSA are going to work because the, the enforcement uh, uh, officers, Madam Speaker, have not been working. Sometimes you can just see them talking over the phone instead of working many times. And you cannot operate stopping vehicles and talking uh, to the phone the way our Kenyan police uh, do. Madam Speaker, uh, the road uh, cameras, Madam Speaker, the CCTV cameras uh, must be put on every road, Tamaka Road especially, uh, all over the country, Madam Speaker, 
we want to adopt the Europe uh, system, Madam Speaker, like in the, in the in, in US, the police will not fall, uh, will not put a roadblock on the road. There are no roadblocks for police uh, uh, on the road, Madam Speaker, but they have put CCTV on the roads everywhere. Wherever you go, uh, police will just follow you if you have made a mistake, if you are over speeding, and if it will detect also when you are drunk, Madam Speaker, you'll just see the police following you with the, the, the either more their motorbike or the police the car. Uh, they are not put uh, police like here. They look private, but they are just for the police to monitor the roads, Madam Speaker. And this is what we need to adopt. Recently, I, I lost my neighbors, three boys uh, near me. Madam Speaker, it, they were crushed by the trailer. You could not I, I, I identify them. I mean, I identify them, Madam Speaker. And even when I was sending my condolence, I say that uh, there are two who, um, whom I don't know. And yet they are just my neighbors uh, near my, my house. Madam Speaker, they were crushed by the, the truck. Madam Speaker, the roads are, some roads are small uh, in the size, and that is why, Madam Speaker, uh, very many people are being crushed by big Thank you. The Honorable Rashid Benziba, member for Kisauni. Sante sana, Madam Speaker. Kunipafursa na mimi niweze kuchangia swala hili ambalo lime leta hasara kubwa katoifa letu majali mabarabarani. Ni uzuni kubwa Ni uzuni kubwa sana mwishimu wa speaker kwa maisha na upotea kwenye barabara zetu na, kubadi, na kubadilisha kwa watu wetu kwa hali ya maumbile yao kwa wakati mmoja. Anatoka nyumbani akiwa mzima, anarudi bada wiki akiwa mlemavu. Hii ni kitu cha kusikitisha sana kwa barabara zetu. Na hapa mwishimu wa badi, pia mwanachama wa kamati ya, ya transport, hamezungumza wazuazi mambo ambayo ya natosha ya rekebishwe. Lakini upande wangu mimi nitakwenda kwa wizara ya barabara. Wizara ya barabara inahitajika iwekeze ili kupunguza jirani zetu ajali zimerudi chini Rwanda hata Tanzania karibu na sisi. Lakini hapa kwetu shida imekuwa hapa ndio ajali zaidi imekuwa sasa mheshimiwa speaker Watu wakitaka kutoka na familia asubuhi kama wanasafiri kwenda hatua kidogo kwanza wanaomba maombi Naomba maombi ya kwenda kaburini wanaomba maombi ya kuamkia huko kwa sababu hawana uhakika wa kufika na hata wakiwa kwa barabarani wale wamewacha manyumbani wana wasiwasi mpaka wanawapigia simu mpaka wafike mshafika yeye ndio wanachukuru ni kwa sababu barabara zetu zina matatizo Hizi wizara wakisha waende wasome semu zile zengine. Hapa kuna kibarabara kimijitengezwa kijidogo, kidogo, yani ata kupishana ni shida. Hawa madreva wetu walioko hapa Kenya, ni madreva wazuri sana wakenda nchi za ulaya. Kwa sababu barabara ni pana, wanaweza kupishana na magari mengine. Ajali nyingi hapa naziona ni head on. Kwa sababu huyu na overtake, huyu amefika. Kwa sababu vijibarabara vimejifinya sana. Vile vile wizara lazima iweke ishara kwenye mbarabara. Ya kuonesha hapo unapo kwenda mbele kuna kona ambayo ni mbaya Hapo sasa hapa mahali pakinyesha panateleza Lakini sasa hapa hakuna ni wende tu wewe Huko mbele hata ishara ya bampu hakuna Unaenda unapanda ile bampu unajikuta umengia msituni Ama umepige wa wanao uza mboga Kwa hivyo hile wizara, wizara yetu ya, ya, ya barabara lazima iwekeze Halafu lengine ni ushirikiano Baina ya wale walikadao wote walioko pale barabarani Ikiwa barabara ikiwa mabasi yanaleta yana ajali lazima uwaite wale washikadao mmoja mzungumze nao mjue shida iko wapi kwa nini na kuwa hivi ikiwa madereva wanakuwa wanafanyishwa kazi ziada pale mtawaeleza vipi watakapokonda taratibu lakini hapa kwetu hakuna kuitana washikadao ni mtu anakaa ofisini anaamua kuanzia kesho chika wewe dereva amefanya hivi hiyo haiwezi saidia kama taifa taifa lazima watu wakae chini wajadiliane Na katika wale washikadao wale oko barabarani kama polisi Ikiwa mmeona polisi, uyule polisi officer Wako polisi wazuri, 
na kuna wale maofisa ambao wanapenda pesa mkijua huyu anapenda pesa mwachenya kalinde benki alafu lete wengine ambao wataka barabarani eh yule ambaye anapenda pesa mweke karibu na benki pale ahesabu asikize harufu ya pesa mulete maofisa ambao ni wazuri wataka barabarani kuhakikisha kwamba wanasimamisha gari na kumshtaki dereva kwa haki si kumshtaki tu kwa sababu wamekuja wataka shilingi mbili amekwambia hana unamshtaki kwa hivyo mheshimiwa speaker ni sisi wenyewe kama wizara ama serikali mambo mengi ya pango si masuala ya madreva dereva ni sawa ikiwa amefanya ajali mara ya kwanza ameenda ameshtakiwa amefanya ya pili huyo tayari iwe na, na doa ile license yake siwe renewed tena lakini si kwamba tu mnaamka na kusema kwamba wewe nyinyi madreva kuanzia leo mtarudi training muta, si wote si wote ambao wana matatizo kwa hiyo speaker mimi ningependa kwenda zaidi lakini kuna mheshimiwa Samza ana maneno makali mazuri pia akipewa nafasi na mda wangu itakuwa ni uzuri asante sana madam speaker kumkwisha asante mheshimiwa Benziba uh, the honorable Timothy Toroitit member for Marakwet West thank you honorable speaker for giving me an opportunity to contribute on this very important motion Honorable Speaker, from the onset, I wish to thank the Honorable Oscar Nabulindo for such um, a precedent-setting motion that we discuss the safety of our roads in Kenya. Honorable Speaker, it is very unfortunate that in this country we lose so many people through road accidents. Honorable Speaker, this can be attributed to so many factors. One of the issues that we have in this country, Honorable Speaker, is the road designs. Honorable Speaker, if you travel in some of these roads. You find that there are roads that have, um, the culverts are not completed. You find that there are areas that are not properly drained. And those are the issues that are the Ministry of Transport should be able to look closely at to ensure that the design of our roads meets the threshold that is needed. Honorable Speaker, what is killing this country is corruption. We have so many legislations. I have had the advantage of practicing in our courts. Honorable Speaker, we have the Traffic Act, Cap 43, which is very explicit in terms of the legal provisions it has provided for traffic offenses. Honorable Speaker, we have various statutes that regulate traffic uh, element in this country. Honorable Speaker, we have regulations, we have rules, we have guidelines, so many of them. Honorable Speaker, what is lacking in this country is enforcement. Another speaker, sometimes it is wrong to blame, uh, for example, the CS for transport. Because there are so many traffic, there are so many enforcement officers that the laws in this country provides for. Honorable Speaker, we have traffic officers in our roads. And I say corruption because of this. Honorable Speaker, we have, as members of this house, police officers from all over the country have been requesting for transfers. And most of the officers want to be placed in the roads as traffic officers. Honorable Speaker, the reason for that is because they want to corrupt their ways in the roads, get quick money, and they don't for enforce the rules, the laws that are in place that are supposed to be enforced. Honorable Speaker, the other weekly that we have is our courts. Honorable Speaker, there is al the allegations of massive corruption when it comes to the issue of persecution of traffic offenders in our country. Honorable Speaker, some people have, have, have found their ways to be able to give, be given uh, penalties that are not provided for by the law. Honorable Speaker, as a house, we also need to look at the enforcement of our, of, in terms of amending the existing laws. Honorable Speaker, we have an offense in this country called causing death by careless driving which provides actually for a certain, certain penal consequences. Honorable Speaker, some of those penal consequences need to be reviewed because if, for example, someone has caused death by careless driving and you give a fine of 10,000 shillings, it is something that as a country we must be able to look at as a house because this house is charged with the law, is, is a law-making body. We must be able to sit down, we review the traffic laws in this country and be able to ensure that we have we set penalties that can be able to set examples to others who want to cause uh, uh, traffic offenses. Honorable Speaker, finally, traffic 
for accidents in this country is an issue of sometimes individuals. Honorable Speaker, it goes to our morality as our nation. The basis of our, the foundation of this country is we have certain moral values that we uphold. Honorable Speaker, there are certain decent acts that as drivers, that as Kenyans, we should be able to abide by our, our roads. Honorable Speaker, on the issue of, for example, obstruction, why should we overlap? It is an issue of morality. Honorable Speaker, morality, there is no school for mor morality in this country. These are inherent values that individuals must be able to have so that they can be behave in a manner that respects other road users in our country. Honorable Speaker, in as much as we wish to blame other, other, uh, other authorities. Honorable Speaker, the issue of morality, we should be able to have conscience in our roads. Honorable Speaker, we should also have the issue of enforcement of our laws by the relevant stakeholders in this country. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much. The Honorable Dr. Nikal, if you speak for two minutes, the Honorable wow. Sane will have a turn. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. I'll just say that this is a problem of a big magnitude. But the problem is we approach things with the knee-jerk reaction. We don't even do analysis of what causes the problems, whether it is a road structure and road signs, vehicle failure, roadworthiness of vehicles, human error, whether people are drunk, whether they are speeding, whether people have poor eyesight, and then use that to do a planned enforcement not when some things happen and suddenly you see people on the road. If we do that and analyze why things are happening and we do something that is done regularly, daily, that is how people learn. If things are done regularly, daily, according to the law, including court and imprisonment, people will follow. But if we wait until something happens and we don't even know the root causes, nothing will happen. With that, Madam Speaker, I support I support, and I would ask the honorable member that actually we should analyze why they are happening. Thank you very much. The honorable Sane, member for Ajia North. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Vehicular accidents are a serious concern nationally. Madam Speaker, the fatalities arising from road carnage far overwhelms the combined fatalities of COVID-19, terrorists, and other causes of death in this country. It is nearly the killer number one in Kenya. Uh, Madam Speaker, in recognition of this concern, the President today, today launched the National Road Safety Action Plan to kickstart national campaigns towards road safety. Uh, just after the noon prayers, the Islamic noon prayers today, I'll be going to Langata Cemetery to at least participate in the burial of one whom we lost yesterday uh, in an accident between Nakuru and Langata. That is the extent Kenyan households are very much devastated by road accidents. Uh, what the current situation we are enmeshed in is as a result of so many factors. First, do we have the laws? I believe we have comprehensive laws. What we are in is in a situation where we can't enforce the laws. I can see the light is on. Uh, and uh, uh, it is about enforcement. We have the laws. It would be better if all the concerned sectors participate in making sure that uh, our laws are implemented accordingly. Behavior. It's not a one-man affair. Road safety is a societal issue. Madam Speaker, do we really observe safety measures in our road? From the drivers, pedestrians, all users. I, it calls upon uh, all Kenyans to check on their behavior so that we are sensitive to road safety. Uh, Father, Madam Speaker, it is about this new concern, a major concern, is motorbikes, the use of motorbikes on our roads. Do we have the right engineering to accommodate motorcycle, uh, motorcycles? How are they managed in terms of licensing? Who, can, who has a database that can at least show that a particular motorbike comes from Mojia North and it is traversing the entire nation on the northern part of the nation 
and somebody can at least be answerable and emphasize. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Members. Um, I can see lots of interest. The Honorable Dawood, the Honorable Zamzam, Honorable Mbaka, the Honorable Kwame, the Honorable Ivo Bara, and the Honorable Patrick, Patrick Monene. Time is up. Honorable Members, let us be upstanding. Honorable Members, and the time now being... One o'clock, this house stands adjourned until today afternoon, Wednesday, the 17th day of April 2024 at 2.30 p.m.